So, welcome to our latest blog. We're driving to Comic-Con with butterflies in my stomach, presenting footage for the first time. It was always a slightly intimidating and scary thing. Plus, I've got to face a day of interviews. But um, another 10 hours and it'll all be behind us. Hopefully we'll uh, find Ian and Richard in here somewhere. The Hobbit suit me is more funny. One interview down. When I call you guys up on stage... We're we coming out one at a time. Yes. I saw on the One Ring this morning that people have been camping out since Wednesday to get into Wall Age. Those are the sorts of people that I like hanging out with. I'm going to be going on soon and I've been recruited to do some blog filming with my iPhone because this camera isn't allowed on stage but nobody's going to stop me shooting with my iPhone. Let's bring up a few of our friends that we have here. Philippa Boyens, Andy Circus, Richard Armitage, Martin Freeman, Sir Ian McKellen. We also have a surprise guest, Elijah Wood. I love you guys. I came all the way from Brazil just because of you. Thank you. I spent all my money on this trip, but it, it was worth it. These are the people that we're making the film for, and I'm really happy that it was received in such a great way. I'd just like you to do something for all the people that couldn't be here. Could you just say hi from Comic-Con? One, two, three. Hi. Fantastic. No need for a take two. That was bloody good. And so now we would like to show you a little bit of what we showed the audience in Hall H. <laughs> Right. Welcome to the last five days of our shoot. <laughs> it's a bittersweet kind of moment. <laughs> it feels like I'm still at the foot of the mountain. It's a little difficult to do a, a wrap out on our last bit of shooting because so much of what we've been doing recently has been filmed too, which is obviously secret. But um, we'll show you little bits and pieces, little snippets, and uh, there'll be a lot more of what we've been doing that will save up uh, for future vlogs. Hey, Comic-Con fans, how are you? This is Dory, coming live from the set of The Hobbit. Stay classy, San Diego. Hi, Comic-Con, John Callan here. I play Oin in The Hobbit. Hi, this is Dwalin saying a big hi to all of you in Comic-Con. Greetings from the very heart of Middle Earth. A really amazing moment for me, I guess. It was the first time we stepped onto Bag End. It's become so embedded in your psyche from what you've seen before. We're all ready to go, and Ian came on for the first time, and you look at him and you go, oh my God, you, that's Gandalf. I look back on that with fondness because we got to know each other on Bear Game, and we really got to know each other as dwarves. <laughs> Hi, Comic-Con, it's Adam Brown here, AKA Ori from The Hobbit set. One of the most exciting things, I think, for me, was working on these sets that kind of are part of our history. And there was I working on Rivendell with some incredible actors. Just watching Kate Blanchett act, it was very moving. We had shivers down our spines. It was absolutely astonishing. It's been a privilege being back in Middle Earth. <laughs> hey, Comic-Con, hope you're having a good time. My name is Lee Pace. I play the Elven King, Thranduil. Some of the work that I really loved was with Terry Notary, who designs movement for the different races. And the way the elves move is very different than the way the dwarves move, obviously. It was really fun to get into that character and really move in a way that is not human. Yeah! Sylvester McCoy, who played Radagast, is the loveliest, loveliest man. I need people. I think that Sylvester's going to be one of the delights of these movies. The real McCoy. 
<laughs> I remember going out to Trentum and wandering through the 100 meters of forest that they built and seeing Roscobel, which is Radagast's house. Radagast's character was a lovely, spirited wizard, and his house really reflected his character beautifully. Dale was beautiful. It really was like, it was like being in another country. It was very Moroccan, Turkish Moroccan sort of Italian. Italian yeah. Yeah. Dale was one of the, uh, the larger sets. It rivals some of the bigger sets we've ever built, which would have been Minas Tirith and Helm's Deep, I guess, in the old days. The city of Dale was such a huge set. You're able to just wander around as if you were in some abandoned city you've always wanted to visit. The most fun I've had on set would prob probably be uh, the goblins. Goblin Town, the sets just seem to be really sharp and really angular and lots of flames and lots of bones. We were introduced to the great goblin. Well, Barry Humphreys is um, something of an iconic legend in this part of the world and uh, I've seen two or three of his Stay Med and stage, stage shows and Barry and the Goblin King just seem to be a natural fit. Have yeah. you seen the pile of intestines? Oh no, but I'll go and check them out. I don't know if anyone's home, but we'll soon see. I found Beyond's house absolutely mesmerising. It's one of my favourite parts of the book, and the creation, uh, the carving that they did inside that, that beautiful barn, and everything was so oversized. I want to write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. <laughs> we built it to the scale of the dwarves, so it was huge. And it made all of us feel small. Uh, you used to be able to stand on that set and look at the crew setting up the camera, and, and they looked like tiny little people. It was kind of incredible. Good morning, everyone. Happy last day. Morning. What we're doing for this shot is we're going to set, we're going to get Orlando up on here. Somebody stuck something to my back. What is it? Second unit, I think we're a bit of the rock and roll unit, and, you know, we have a bit of fun. <laughs> Greg's shorts, I think. That's me yeah. <laughs> Just loop it, bro, just loop it. No problem. I'm disturbed. It's like an eight-year-old schoolboy. What do you mean it's like an eight-year-old schoolboy? He has got energy to burn, and that infectious enthusiasm and his absolute dedication made a huge difference to the second unit. And crank it up, and it's three, two, one, action! <gasps> and cut! That is a wrap for the second unit. <laughs> second unit! There's a, a mixture of emotions. Good to finish, but uh, sad at the same time. Quite frankly, I can't, I can't imagine this occurring anywhere else on the planet, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. One of the memories that really sticks in my head the most is walking in through the gates of Stone Street at 4.45 in the morning when it's dark and there's no one else here and the stars are still out. And then slowly the studio comes to life and the sun comes up. I saw a lot of those days. You're going to be getting up at 5.30 in the morning for a year and a half, at least 12 hours a day. Morning. Do you literally just wake up every morning and go shoot a movie? And it seems to last a lifetime. This is the kind of movie where it changes everybody's lives. What we do is kind of driven by adrenaline, so we keep going until we collapse. <laughs> We've got ready about 20 people a day, and that's about 5,000 prosthetic makeups. <laughs> We're busy, but sometimes we get bored being busy. In the last 18 months, we've probably gone through about 20 litres of glue, about 450 miles of yak hair, hence there are now a lot of cold yaks in the Himalayas somewhere. I've never worked on such a hairy movie. Even I'm sporting a beard now, and I've never had a beard before, so it's obviously sort of rubbing off somewhere along the line. Just the sheer amount of lead characters with costumes. For some reason, they all want to wear costumes. They all want pants, they all want shoes made for an enormous amount of costumes. All of these clothes to nearly the back of the truck is Bilbo. For Smog's Lair, we used so much gold paint, I used everything in Australasia, and we had to get it from Germany. Wunderbar. 22,817,520 feet if we were shooting 35 mil like this. And I'm really glad we're not. I'm sure that I've done over 2,500 drawings. I kept my pencil stubs. You can literally do a drawing one day. 
and then walking on the set a few days later. We shoot a set, take it out, and replace it for the very next day's shoot. They put up the most incredible sets. You walk in the night before, and it's not finished. And you think, my god, how are we ever going to be in here tomorrow filming? And yet you walk in 8 o'clock the next morning, and it's ready to go. To me, that's probably one of the most gratifying things on this whole picture, that all these people force through impossible odds and, and create these beautiful things. Wow. wow. I'll miss the camaraderie of the folks that we've built up and the cast and crew. You know, we've spent an awful long time together. There's like sort of 12 or 13 of us who have been in a mini army. <laughs> well, I mean, they're all people I would love to work with again. Fantastic cast. <laughs> I'm surrounded by these mates. I'm surrounded by my comrades. I'm surrounded by these great actors. Please, not every time. Get off. I mean, you get so close that you're um, able to freely abuse them on a daily basis, and they don't seem to mind. And that's the poster. <laughs> but a very high quality of human beings involved. Pretty soon we won't be all together as a gang, which is going to be sad. We'll all miss each other terribly. You're getting to come to work with a group of people that you love working with, that you love hanging out with. It's a real family. What's this in our laundry? Look at that. Oh! <laughs> Red-handed! What happens on The Hobbit stays on The Hobbit. <laughs> Up and look Okay, and action. I need a horse. Why? Uh, where are you going? In search of answers. All right, okay. Well, unless anybody has anything else they want to shoot, I think we should pull that a day. Thank you. Well, obviously, I just want to say thank you to everybody, an incredible cast, incredible crew. Seems like a lifetime ago that I had to do this speech at the beginning of the shoot. Oh, God, it was a long time ago. You know, as a director, it can be kind of a lonely job. Um, you know, at times you feel like you're by yourself trying to solve problems, but then everybody steps in and, and, and suddenly I realise I've got this incredible support and all of you guys have got my back and you're behind me. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you. It's been a terrific atmosphere shooting this movie and I hope the vlogs have in some way given you all a chance to share in that and to experience it for yourselves. Uh, and we'll be, we'll be continuing in post-production. The, the energy, the uh, environment, everything's going to be very, very different, but it's still got equal amount of challenges. So look forward to seeing you during post-production. It's, it's just lemonade, honestly. Come on, show some love. Put your arm around the person next to you.